Plus. That guy flies RC here. We got the FMS Typhoon here in pieces. We're going to do an assembly of it. Welcome to my site. And we're going to assemble. I've already viewed the manual fairly thoroughly. And as with most models, you're going to start with your tail pieces. In this case, your rudder is already installed. So we're going to work on the tail. All right. Now, I've already, as you, if you watch my unboxing video, which you'll, I've already worked my hinges, which is something you want to do. All right. They only fit in one way. You have a small spar. It goes, let me move this chair out of my way. They're only going to go uh, work one way and one, oh, hey, that fell out. Um, real simple. The side that has your control horn, pay attention to where it is on the model. It's on this side, so obviously this side, this, uh, where this, to this side of the uh, elevator is going to slide in. Now that's going to sit in there nice and snug. This is going to line up with the spar there. A little hint, take a little bit of moisture from your mouth. Okay. Slides in easier. Kind of makes things life a little easier for you there. All right. That lines up nice and pretty. All right. Should it looks like yeah, that's nice and tight and even. Turn that over. In order to assemble this model, you're going to need a 2.0 millimeter hex drive for the main wing screws. And you're going to need a little small Phillips head, preferably with a magnetic tip, to install the tail. You've got two holes here. I don't suggest connecting your um, clevis on your tail as of yet. Wait until you've got the rest of the model assembled, and then you can start hooking up control services. So we'll go ahead and install this. Now it only takes two screws to do this and I'll grab looks like the wrong one they've got two flat screws and I don't know yet know what they're for you get one extra oh that's for the nut for the for the, the uh, hold the nose cone on okay so you're gonna have two of these self tapping little Phillips head screws they're the only ones like it they're the only ones that are self tapping and they're gonna Screw right in the nice solid back um, plastic plate. Let me get a different one, different uh, different screwdriver here. Don't like that Phillips. Sometimes these cheap ones that you get in these kits are some of the best screwdrivers you'll ever have for this hobby. And as suspected, this cheap old. Phillips set screwdriver is exactly doing the trick. So, yeah. Make sure that's nice and tight. Now, you don't want to go so tight that you strip it. You just go down where it's nice and snug, and then you stop. Okay? Don't go crazy with it. Ah! Okay. Be nice if this was magnetic. Let's see if this one has a little bit of magnesium or has a little bit of magnet to it. You can also put a little magnet on the end of your screwdriver, an actual magnet up here near the the base of it, and that will magnetize your entire screwdriver. A little trick that I've learned. Not doing it right now, but but it's something you can do to make your screwdriver magnetized. A lot of people don't know that. Get that nice and tight, tight, and then back off about half a turn. Get the other one nice and tight, and then back off about half a turn. All right, see we got, that does both sides. Now, Tail is assembled. Turn your attention to the wing. 
That is the next piece of hardware to install. Now, FMS puts these quick connects on. I don't personally like them myself. That's just me. I undo them. And I like the wires to feed down in there. Yes, I know it makes kind of a crow's nest. But I like to know what I got a hold of. Get very careful. It's going to unsnap that. Okay, so there's my quick connect. We've got channel 5, which is probably flaps or gear, aileron, and flap. Okay, so that's gear. All right, that's everything. Now, I'm going to take those. I'm going to feed that down to that hole. Just like that. Let that sit down in there. Okay, now you're going to notice you're going to have to turn this wing up, kind of push it forward a little bit. And that should, there you go, drop right in place. And it does. All right, so let's, we got these supplied screws. Like that. Make sure you don't have anything binding anywhere. Okay. You don't want to run the risk of vibration and that causing a lead to come undone mid flight because you didn't take the time to make sure everything was not pinched. Put your, you got, like I said, you got an extra of everything here. So if you do lose something, don't fear. You do have an extra screw. Or a screw loose, kind of like me. All right, so. Just like when you put tires or you put lug nuts. If any of you have ever worked on cars. And you put lug nuts on. You always alternate, crisscross. It's a good practice with anything like that where you've got multiple multiple connections. Now what I like to do, because they got reinforcement here, you're going to tighten it up until you start to see maybe the foam just dent a little bit and then back off just a touch. Then alternate up to here. Do the same thing. All the way down to feel it sink. You'll feel, it, you'll feel that resistance. Go all the way down and start seeing your phone crease just a little bit. Back off half a turn. Come over here. And we're going to do the same thing. Now you can kind of get your hand or so under there or part of your arm or whatever to protect that. The other thing you can do is put this on a pillow. Uh, Brian Phillips on his side, he's a big fan of using a pillow. I do that sometimes too. And... Uh, just a good all if you don't have any stands or you just don't want to use a stand pillow take crease back off a touch and uh, I like the, I like to use a stand because it keeps the tail up off the table okay and it's just one of those old stands you can get almost any hobby shop I don't know what brand they are okay search so crease and then back off just a touch all right well, let's see what we got here now one way to tell is if you have a nice even seam all the way around, which we do. We have a nice even seam, no obvious gaps. Everything looks like it's joined nice. I like to take a look at it from this angle. Make sure, because see once you screwed everything down, maybe you screwed one side up a little more than the other. Now you've got a little bit of play. Okay. Make sure everything, and then they kind of look like they've all sunk evenly with each other. Maybe this one will go down just a touch more. You know, and then I'm kind of a, a brute thing. Does it feel nice and solid now? Okay, well, there you go. Now, we've got that. The majority of the model is put together, you know, just, just, just for fun. Let's do this real quick. Take a look at it. All right, if I can get the stuff to stay in there. 
that is. Hang in there. All right. All right. That one lead wants to be popping out of that servo. So now I want to come out and see what's going on. Well, anyways, there you go. You put your. It's keyed. It's got a hex, a hexagon shape. That goes right on there. Slide right on there. Don't put your prop on you. I'm just showing you. You know. That goes on there like that. Actually, no, it goes like that. And then, and then I was wondering what these these flat black screws go to. Well, now I know. Fit right in there. It would fit on that nut right there. That would go right here. But I'm not going to put the that would the cone would go there. And then this little Phillips driven screw would go right in the end of that once you tighten that down. Not putting a prop on yet because I got to do the rest of the build. But since I have the, you know, basically the models put together, now is a great time to set to check your control services. Make sure everything is nice and level and, and centered. They claim this thing is supposed to be centered right out of the box. Well, I'm sure it is, but let's. Let's make sure of it ourselves. And the easiest way to do that is before you hook anything up, identify your servos. Okay, let's start with our tail back here. We already know the rudder's hooked up. So take my hand and I see that move. Okay, so let's grab the servo for that. Now I've got, I, yes, I do have the fancy Spectrum servo tester checker. But I'm kind of partial to my old, old-fashioned one here. So just bear with me, guys. I know I have a nicer one to use. But we got power to it. If I got it right, if I got it hooked up, no, I don't. Remember, white to white or, or light to light, dark to dark, and looky there. Right, you can feel on all the servo testers, they, all servo testers and checkers like this you have a neutral point you can feel it or you can see it depending on the display and that rudder is already hooked up and comes right back to center okay so let's take now you're not going to see any movement right now but I'm going to take the lead for the elevator I'm going to ensure that it's okay, that's the neutral position so now I'm going to turn the model over since I know my servo is now completely neutral. Turn the model over and I'm now going to hook up um, the control service. So it, it looks neutral. I'm going to hook, hook this up right here, kind of tight. So let me let you see this kind of a tight view but this is where on this is the control rod this is the control horn or are the control arm for the clevis the clevis attaches to the control horn on the um, or the control arm on the cert on the control service and I'm going to hook those two things up may not be able to see it that well on the camera for right now I'm going to hook it up for the least amount of movement now for me to hook that up to where I believe like it's neutral looks like it's pretty good right there where it's at. So I'm going to pinch that together. Let me find me something I can pinch with because it's kind of a tight space. Okay, so I'm going to pinch that together. It'll probably, yeah, pop in there. There's already a piece of uh, fuel line which is great because that holds your clevis together. You want, if you don't have a piece of fuel line already installed on there, then if you then cut you some fuel line, there's what I want, and use that. If you don't have that, get them really small zip ties are great for that. Oh, it came unpopped. Okay, that's where it helps to have a little bit of nails. Now sled that zip tie on there okay let me find my elevator again now that it's hanging there it is and light to light dark to dark and looky there we have movement and when it comes back it's not quite quite neutral 
Okay, looks could be deceiving. So, if that's the case, let's make sure it is that way. Okay, now you can do this one of two ways. You can mechanically change it or you can do it with your radio once you get it hooked up. But let's just say you don't have that kind of radio. That simple sir or simple transmitter and you can't you can only adjust it with pins or, or little uh, movement arms. So I suggest correcting this trim manually. So in order to do that, I'll flip it back over. I just turn it over so you can see. Hit the model. Alright. We can see it's hooked up and it's slightly up on both sides. So slide that fuel line back again we're going to unhook it unhook the uh, clevis which you need to use keep your tools handy okay unhook it we're gonna grab a move that out of the way and we're going to want to turn remember right to tight left to loosen right so if i want if i want that to come up some okay then if I want that to come up some, then I'm going to need to tighten that up. So I'm going to go right to turn it towards the right. And that should pull that clevis in just a little bit. And of course, it does quite a bit. Let's go back, keeping sure our elevator is neutral. Okay, so we know that's neutral. There's my line, I'm up way too much. So that tells me that turns are very, very distinct in this. So I'll go back out just a little bit and you just keep doing this until you find where you're happy, where it's nice and it's neutral. Okay, not quite enough. Okay, let's go a little bit more. Hook that up again. Um, uh, actually, yeah, we're there. You know, on maybe half a turn. Half a turn. I'm going to do it. That looks, okay, without hooking it up, look at that. Comes right back. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So let's attach that together. Pull the fuel line back up over there. All right, that is nice and secure. Okay, very happy. And just to let you know, I didn't leave it in. The, I actually put it in the middle part of the control horn. I think that's more than enough deflection. Okay, so we know our rudder is perfect. We know our elevator is perfect. Let's turn our attention to the, ele to the ailerons. Now, find the ailerons. Channel 5. Well, that's flaps. Let's look at flaps real quick. Or that might be gear. Hey! Gear works perfect. Okay. Let's look at the ailerons. I found the aileron. Light to light, dark to dark. Neutral. That is just, oh, that's almost perfect. So I would, you know, yeah, that's, that's, that's maybe a half a millimeter off. I, I'm, and I'm fine with that. That looks good to me. That's more than enough. It's good throw. And last but not least, the old flapperoonie. Light to light, dark to dark. Split flaps. Now there's your landing flaps. Takeoff flaps. Flaps up. If you notice, they don't completely go down. But they look pretty even. I'm okay with that. Now you can put them on a roller or 
You can put them on a uh, switch, you know, a three position switch, or just, you know, however you want. But a roller is really good. That way you can adjust. Okay, now let's, okay, we, we're, we're good. I'm, I'm good with my flat function. I'm good with my elevator function. I'm good with my rudder function. I'm good with my aileron function, okay? Now, let's make sure that our motor will fire up, okay? Now, in order to, but those are no props, so in order to check that, you actually have to hook the ESC up, okay? And then your throttle lead from your ESC, that's what you hook to your battery checker, okay? To, to your uh, servo tip. Make sure you don't have a separate power to it. Light to light, dark to dark, okay? All the way down. That's armed. Now, it's moving. Okay. <laughs> going that way. Good. So if it's going that way, that means the prop will turn this way, pushing the air backwards. Okay, so she's in good shape. Powerful. Okay. Everything functions correctly on the model. So next would be... Um, Installing a receiver, binding her up, uh, making sure all your trim is right, and then taking her for a fly. But before we do that, we do have one other, th a couple more minor thing to do, besides putting the prop on. Got some decorations. Now, the ball came. Now, I will take some two-sided tape. By the way, that's a 40 amp ESC in there. I will take some two-sided tape and um, snuggle down the uh, ESC. Uh, I will take some small zip ties like these, tidy up all the wires, get my, my receiver in there, you know, and get that all done. That's not something you see on the camera, but we, I do want to show you something real quick. We're going to install these guns. Now, thinking all these guns pretty much look the same. They're angled, so they're only going to fit and look right one way. Looks like they're the same. Hmm. Yeah. Pretty much only going to fit one way. Now, anytime you're going to be gluing foam to foam, plastic to foam, take a little piece of sand paper. Sand, I, I like using blocks, that's just me. Sand, that area, it's gonna to be touched down, just to scuff up that surface. It gives, it's good for your glue that you use, which I'm gonna use you pour which is similar to foam tack. You can use foam tack. You could use uh, CA if you wanted. You could use um, this foam cure. It takes a little long for that. I like foam tack. I love you pour. You can use Gorilla Glue, but remember it's gonna foam up, so you might have to hold it down with some uh, um, tape, uh, like blue painter's tape. But I like this you pour. It seems to work really well. You don't need a whole lot, okay? And just let that get in there, nice and pretty. Make it all pretty, okay? Get that in there. Like I say, it's got nice channels. It's only gonna fit the one way on there. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. All right. Go ahead and sand these a little bit. Now if you look at RC Informers, when he, he does a unboxing, of, he's already, if you notice like the paint's already kind of messed up right on there. That, that's what he's done. He's taken a little bit of sandpaper and that's just a good practice, just a good practice to get into. Is uh, anytime you're going to be connecting foam pieces, you need to scuff up the 
the opening. Scuff up the surface just a little bit for that exact purpose. Let's bring that up a little bit. That gives, like I said, gives more area for the glue to uh, connect to. I like this U-Port glue. It's, it's, it's kind of one of my favorite glues. It works, it seals pretty good. It seals, actually it seals really well. Sets up nice. And uh, so anyways, there you go. Other than the uh, um, putting on the spinner, working out all my electronics, so that's pretty much it, you know. Put that on there. Now, I know I don't have the back plate on there, but that's pretty much going to be it. Now, let's talk about something real quick before we close out this video. A lot of people, this is just on topic but off topic, okay? A lot of people talk to me online, give me comments, ask me questions about my flap settings and flaps. Okay, people, flap settings are subjective. Okay, like I've talked to you and, and talked to y'all in other videos, I can take two 2200 batteries, they're both 2200 three cells, and they weigh, they can weigh whole lot different. There'd be a lot of difference in the weight in them. Okay, so wouldn't you agree that if I have two of the same rating batteries put in the same spot in a plane, isn't that going to affect the CJ a little bit differently? And just so you, in case you're new to this, CG means center of gravity. Okay, so center of gravity is very important in a plane. Very important in flaps, okay? If your plane's not flying level, your flaps are just going <laughs> to flap around. <laughs> flaps aren't going to be as effective as you need them to be. The CG needs to be right, okay? So let's talk about flaps by themselves. Start out with no mix for your flaps. In other words, your flaps come down, your flaps go up. Nothing's being done with your elevator, just your flaps. See how the plane reacts. Lots of low-wing planes are not going to balloon as much as a high-wing plane will with flaps. Okay? So, do no settings right off the bat. Just drop your flaps down, how, how much you're comfortable with for, for takeoff, and then how much, much more, like usually twice that amount, for your landing flaps. See how the plane reacts. If, it, if you don't like the way it reacts, put it back up, land it, and put it and start over. Okay, what I like to do, I like to put my flaps down and about on a, on, I can only talk to you about in, in spectrum transmitters because that's what I'm used to. That's in percentages, okay? I usually like to have about 20% down, 20, 22% down for my takeoff flaps and then maybe 50 to 100% down on my takeoff, on my landing flaps, how it looks on the plane. And, and then look at look, which other videos. Look at videos of this plane flying. Look at the actual plane in real life. Try to see some pictures of it sitting there parked or when it's land. How, how far are them flaps down? And then correlate that to your model because the models are that go after the actual plane. What the actual plane does, the model's going to do. The physics are the same. Okay? So, if in the real plane, then flaps are dropped for landing, dropped all the way down, then you're probably going to have 100% down, okay? And then if they, they're only so, then just kind of look at it. Maybe only 75% down, maybe only 50% down. It depends on your transmitter, how it looks, okay? Then, if you're going to do a mix, okay, I like to do, if I did, say, 20% down for takeoff flaps, Okay, I'm only going to do maybe 5% down for elevator. If I do 50% for my landing, for landing flaps, I may do about 22% down on my elevator, 20%, somewhere around there. Maybe like, say like maybe a quarter of what it is, 20%, 5%, okay, you know, 100%, 25%, that sort of that idea maybe a quarter of down elevator, if that's as clear as mud. <laughs> and because, like I say, 
People say, well, you fly at what's your percentage? Well, your batteries may weigh different than mine. I may have this kind of battery and it weighs more than your battery. It's better just to play with it, you know. Um, get, get a nice, get a starting point. Remember your starting point, go fly. See how it looks, see how it handles, okay? And then through a little bit of adjustment, you'll get the right CG. I took me on my PA-18 here, the big Super Cub, the big F. It took me probably seven or eight tries to finally figure out what percentage I liked on my down elevator and on my on my flaps. And it turns out very little on the tail. Maybe like two percent down on elevator for for takeoff, and maybe like five percent down or eight percent down elevator for landing, just because of the way that model is. The uh, MPD Commander up here has no uh, mix for tail. For its, for its flaps, none whatsoever. That's why you, sometimes these low wings don't have anything. The wing, the, the way it's designed is fine. So, I, I mean, I, I hate to say it, this is what I use. Well, it may not work for you, even though you got the exact same model. You really have to fill it out for yourself. It's just one, because how you fly, the speed at which you like to fly, the weight of your batteries, all that comes in, into play in your flaps. And it's more how you feel the plane. If it feels like it's ballooning too much when you put down landing flaps, then you need a little more down elevator mixed in, okay? If you're taking off and it feels like it takes forever for it to take off, you need a little more on your takeoff flaps. And if it doesn't balloon any on those, then you're fine on your elevator mix, or if you even have any. So honestly, I'm not trying to pass the buck here and say I'm not telling you what my percentages are because my percentages may not be the same for you. You just have to feel it out and see what's right for you. And, and you got nothing but time, okay? Don't, don't get in a hurry. Take off, fly around a little bit, put down your landing flap, see how she reacts. Put down your landing, your, your takeoff, or takeoff flap, see how she reacts. If she doesn't balloon and she flies nice and straight, but she slows down in the air like she's supposed to, bingo, you hit it, okay? Land it. Now take off and see how she does with your takeoff flaps. If she takes off and lifts off nice for you and doesn't balloon one way or the other, bingo, you hit it. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Now, CG on this plane here. There is so much going on about the CG of this plane. Now, the manual calls. Now, I'm not going to put this on my CG machine. I'm just going to show you what the manual says. So there again, my batteries might weigh more than your batteries, and that's going to affect the CG. But the manual says 40 to 45 millimeters. Okay, when balancing your model, the recommended CG location model is 40 to 45 millimeters forward from the leading edge of the main wing. Now, I think they meant to say back from the leading edge of the main wing, based upon the picture. They're showing, if you can see that, they're showing it being the leading edge and then coming back a little bit. Get you one of these things. Get them on Amazon for about eight bucks. It says 40 to 45. So I'm gonna set this for 45 millimeters. 45 millimeters from the leading edge is it says 40 to 45, right? Okay, so if I put that on the leading edge, there's a panel line right here. Maybe a quarter inch back from that line is the furthest back, that's the 45. And they say it's 40 to 45. So let's go in to 40 and see where 40, where that looks like. All right, I got a nice readout for 40. 40 puts it right on that panel line. So, there's no battery in here, but if I had a battery in here and I had my prop and everything on, the way I would do it, the CG is supposed to be right, would be right on that panel line, that first line there. Okay? If I had a battery in there, right now it's going to be tail heavy. There's, there's no battery, no prop. But if I had a battery in there, that should, that's how you would tell. A low wing plane, you want to turn it over. So it's going to be right there on that first line. So when I go to that part, we'll explain that later. Okay, well, there you go, folks. That is the build. 
uh, the um, FMS Typhoon off other than putting the prop on you know I don't have radio in there yet but we got it put together and uh, well you know what I will go ahead and finish it completely I'll go ahead and put the prop on there so that you can see how this beautiful bird looks okay now I want to get me a nice hey the spinner the prop nut goes on there like that now that I've ranted and raved about things slide that bad boy down in there okay and we're going to grab a couple edges of prop and we're going to I want to get that nice. This one's already want it to be nice and tight, nice and secure. And look at that. That goes right in there. Now I suggest taking your little. Uh, this is a non-self-tapping Phillips head screwdriver. Go ahead and get that in there. Hold your finger on it. Line that bad boy up there. Okay, that should line up perfectly. Screw that bad boy right on in. Well, not. Okay. There you go. Now, is that not one good looking model? Isn't it? All right, folks. Next time you see this plane with me, we're going to fly her. It's got to wait for weather and wind and all that crap. All right, folks, thank you for watching. This is Fat Guy Flies RC. Um, great model. <laughs> now I can't wait to maiden her. All right, folks, don't forget to like and subscribe. God bless y'all. Bye-bye. Turn this off. Mm.